Hi, welcome to science. Uh, this is Mr. Peterson and for Team Pegasus and I teach science here and you are the virtual student so it's nice to meet you. Even though I can't see you face to face it would be a lot easier if I could. What I want to do with this intro PowerPoint is just give you an idea of how the classroom is going to be run uh, for chance that we do come back into the classroom. So let me start with the next slide. I don't know if I can get rid of some of these things. All right, so these are some of the units that we're going to be covering. And the very first quarter, we're going to be talking about pendulums and ramps. We're going to put a bunch of different things, roll them down to ramps. We're going to time them. We're going to check distance. We're going to see how gravity plays a, a part in physics. Then, if we have time, we're going to do a little bit with catapults. Now, with you being at home, it's very hard to do this. If you have some materials that you can do, that's great. Otherwise, I will just be taking some videos of these experiments and then sharing them with you. And from there, I expect that you will be able to record the data that we collect from these videos and apply them to what we're learning. In quarter two, we're going to be um, talking a lot more about Isaac Newton and I think a lot of you remember him by the apple falling on his head and how he um, a lot of people think he discovered gravity but we're going to talk more about that learn more about Newton and what he really did that concerns gravity some of these things I do not see us getting through this year we're gonna have to cut some things out and focus a lot more on the standards uh, however I'm going to try to get through as much as possible. So the first half of the year in quarter one and quarter two is focused on physical science. The second half of the year is focused on chemistry. And we're really lucky here in sixth grade because we can do kind of two halves. So we get to mix it up a little bit and do them both. Now they're both pretty basic. There are going to be a lot of introductions to these concepts. And when you get to high school, you're going to go a lot more in depth on what we just do in class here. So hopefully we get a good foundation so that the years ahead are much easier. Now a little bit more about myself. First of all, um, I grew up in Moorhead and I know I was a spud. Um, when I went to college, I became a cobber. So I went from spud to a cobber, um, but Concordia, I, so I stayed in Moorhead. But um, as soon as I graduated, I. Uh, my wife and I, Monica, we moved to Sock Rapids. And we were, lived in Sock Rapids for six years. Now, during this whole time, as I was, as soon as I got my driver's license, so when I turned 16 in Moorhead, I, I started uh, working construction. And I was a carpenter. So I did a lot of apartments and homes. And in fact, if you go to the corner of the interstates where 94 and I-29 are um, meet. There's a lot of apartments in that corner. I helped build a lot of them. Now, I didn't do them all, of course, but there's quite a few I did help with. Um, and there's many other places I did. I did carpentry construction for, I want to say about 13 years uh, during the summers and during vacation time while I went to school and when I first started teaching. Now, I, I bring this up because it kind of explains a little bit about me because I'm really curious and I want to learn. So when I had the choice to get a job, I wanted to get a job where I'm going to learn something. So I chose a job that I could learn how to build a house and uh, I could do that now. So I'm really glad with my construction it taught me how to work hard, how to be physical with the job and but also learn a lot. All right. So I did that as I went to Moorhead went to Concordia and when I first started working in uh, Sock Rapids area. Now my very first contract job was in Monticello. I taught fifth grade. But this was during a time when uh, a lot of education was getting cut. So um, they actually closed the school I was at. So I first started teaching and then they closed the school. So I went from Monticello into Malacca. And I taught third grade in Malacca for three years, great place. However, my wife and I decided to come back home and live back in this area. So 
I got a job at West Fargo. I taught in Ellie Berger for about 11 years, and I taught fifth grade there. Then from there, um, I loved teaching science so much that I came to Cheney so I could teach science full time. So I've been in Cheney now this, for four years, so this is my fifth year. I've been teaching for a total of 21 years, getting up there. Um, while at uh, West Fargo, I did get my master's degree in curriculum instruction from St. Catherine University. Now, this was kind of unique because it was online. It was one of those programs that was just coming out online. So I did it all online. I understand uh, a lot of ideas on how to do things online, and hopefully I can make the best of it while you guys are working online too. All right. Um, I don't know how this will work, but here are some pictures of my family. So we've got my kids here. The, these pictures are getting a little bit old, but you can get a good idea. So here's Quinn. He's my oldest. Marina, my daughter. She's middle. And this is Dax. So if I kind of just push these off to the... Oh, I don't know if I can. So let me... Okay. Um, I might just delete them and then bring them back. So here's my family being silly. We like that. Here's another example of uh, me just showing curiosity because it was raining out. I said, go play outside. And the kids were like, what? It's raining out. I'm like, that's okay. It's fun to splash in a puddle. So they did. And uh, they got soaked and wet, but they didn't melt. So they came back in and told me all about it. Um, this is at Itasca when we were camping, crossing the Mississippi headwaters. I'm sure a few of you have done that before. This is the fire tower at Itasca right here. It's uh, about 100 feet high. It's a really great view. And we like to be at Itasca because my family loves to camp. We love camping. We love to have campfires, go hiking, and just do a lot of exploring. Here's my son Dax again. Uh, Marina is a gymnast at TNT, so she loves doing uh, all kinds of acrobats, and, and she's always flying around somewhere in the house. Quinn uh, would play baseball, basketball, football, and there's another picture of my wife. So let's get to this next slide. And here we are in Boston. My wife and I took a trip, not this last summer, but the summer before. This last year, I don't have any pictures of trips because uh, of COVID. We didn't go anywhere. It was kind of boring. Here, we also took a trip not too long ago to Branson, Missouri. This cave was awesome. You could fit a football field in there if you can see my family way down in there. Um, but it was really neat. Lots of trails and waterfalls and hikes and some great views. And Dax being silly again. Uh, so here's another picture of Branson, Missouri, up, up by a dam. Great view. Really hot, too. It was like 90 degrees and humid every day. And here we are camping and bike riding. So one of the things that you're going to hear me talk a lot about is respect. Um, I'm a really big proponent for respect. I feel like pretty much everything could fit under the wool just the rule of respect. Respect to others, yourself, and property. And when we talk about respect, we're going to talk a lot about citizenship, collaboration, and responsibility. And these are the school rules. They are on the report card. And even if you're online, you can still follow these because uh, citizenship is how you follow rules, how you make be positive, if you're talking to others, if you're asking questions, if you are trying to get somebody's attention on one of these virtual screens. Collaboration is going to be a big part of virtual. It's how you um, partake in it. So if you're not doing anything, you're sitting back, not answering questions, you're going to lose collaboration points. You need to be a part of it. You need to show up. You need to be able to talk and give feedback and do it in a way that's kind and respectful. And then responsibility is going to be a big part because you need to get your work done on time. Uh, I'm teaching the majority of the day, every day, and so that leaves you having a lot more responsibility at home to get things done. Make sure you're staying engaged, doing a great job. You need to be 
um, very rigorous in your work and putting a lot of effort. As I'm telling all my students things that you're going to need, you're going to need to have pencils ready to go. Uh, you need a folder to keep materials in. Uh, you might have to print out some things at home and hold on to them if it's notes or something. I'm going to try to do as much possible digitally so there, there isn't much paperwork. That way it just works out for everyone. So will we use a folder a lot? Probably not. But going to do it. Now I've used in notebooks in the past a lot. Again, I'm going to try to be digital. Um, so I hope that I can avoid the notebook this year, but it's really hard for me because I like that notebook. Make sure that you're getting your assignments in and keeping track of them, even if it's digital. Make sure that you, while well, at home, you should always have books to read and you need your iPad ready to go. You need to have positive attitudes. We're going to work together as a team. We're going to do the best we can. I know it's a weird situation, but we're, we're going to make the best of it. And then class needs to start. So for virtual, you need to be there at the time of class start. In fact, you should probably be there a few minutes early so it's ready to go. Now, I'm going to just throw out a little caution to the wind because there's a lot of things that happen in school that I can't control. So if there's a behavior issue, if there's uh, something else that happens, if it's uh, more of an emergency type, I, I don't know how I can tell you right away that I will be late. Um, sometimes those things happen and you know it's easy to say things, but I, it, it's really hard for me to log into the computer, get the link, wait for it. Um, I can't have just somebody else come by and tell you that I'll be a few minutes late because there's a lot to do. So be patient if during some of the office hours I'm not available right away. I could be in a meeting. I'll try to post it, but I don't even know where I can post it all the time either. But um, be patient and email me. Email me if you have a question, if I can't make those hours. As far as the classroom time, I will do my best to be there every time. But the office hours, I will be available one way or another, okay? So it might not always be face-to-face. -face. I'm going to try my best to be face-to-face because -face I want to see your faces. But just to give you a little caution there, I'll do my best. No, nope, I can't promise everything. Uh, this is quite the challenge for me this year uh, to run three different groups of students at the same time while still teaching all of the different classes that I do. So be patient, please. Um, so that is a little bit of an idea of how the class is going to go. We're going to try to cover this thing as best we can. Obviously, it's the best to be in the classroom and working together, but I understand the circumstances and we'll make this work, okay? So have a good time and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.